<laughs> don't be mad because y'all broke as hell, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they don't rock with the Jaguar XJ no more. It's a fucking. <laughs> We're sorry, Mr. Green. Can we have our ball back? <laughs> of course, of course, young blood, of course. You're going to have to take it from me. <laughs> you can have your ball back. You're listening to the R3 Podcast. No Taylor input. This is a zero Taylor episode. It's pure, pure just me talking. I will look at you about 12 minutes in for a little bit of help. But other than that... I'm going to try and just flow interruptedly. I'm not going to repeat sentences 17 times before I complete them. That's another thing I do that I really hate. Um, I'm going to just try and take you through this hour real smooth-like, and you won't even need to hook nothing up or look nothing up. It's just going to be... This is One Shot with Michael Ridley. This is the new episode. This is the new podcast. It's called One Shot with Michael Ridley. It's just one continuous shot. No pauses, no lulls. Random bursts of hilarity with angry rants sprinkled in. Guys, welcome to another episode of One Shot with Michael Ridley. We're no longer going by Radio Ridley Radio. We're a bandit. It actually turns out there's an, uh, there's an outstanding copyright on the name, and I'm losing the name. I got, a, I got served yesterday, and I have to go to court. We're losing the Radio Ridley Radio. Um, we're losing the rights to the name of the show. So now this is One Shot with Michael Ridley. And uh, today's date is October 23rd. It's 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're in Austin, Texas. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling tan. I'm feeling young. I'm feeling sexy. I'm feeling independent. I'm feeling codependent. I'm feeling <laughs> tri-dependent. I'm feeling quad-pendant. Feeling a lot of pendants right now. I'm just kind of, you know, clutching my pearls and kind of just looking back at everything in the uh, realizing how dank everything is again your boy is back in the gym i was uh i was doing um yesterday was knuckle day i was just doing a lot of knuckle knuckle curls i like to take uh, i like to take two kettlebells and i just curl my knuckles like this i just want to have the biggest knuckles in austin texas i want to i want to walk into a building right i want to walk into a building and the whole everything just stops there's a guy pouring a drink for someone he's there's a guy talking to his girlfriend. I walk in. Boom. I have giant ludicrous knuckles. I just want big ass get back ludicrous knuckles. <laughs> and I want them to be so big that when I idly walk by, they just kind of sway. They just have like a chill sway to them. <laughs> they can't control. That's what I want. And I want to um I want to be able to I want to be able to press my fingers down like this and jump off the ground several feet in the air. I just want to be able to, I want to do one of those. It's my new power. I want to be, I want to, I want to be built like Ludacris from the Get Back music video. That is my, those are, that's my dream body right now. I just, you know, I just have several Ludacris posters all over my room. My wife is asking questions. I'm telling her to shut up and let me work. She's always trying to disrupt the process, man. That's the thing that, you know, I'll sit her down. I'll sit her down and I'll be like, yo, why why can't I, uh, you know, be my best self? You know, you're always kind of getting in the way of my creative process. And my creative process right now is vintage 2000s posters of Ludacris all over our one bedroom, okay? I wake up, I look in the mirror, you know, I put a, uh, I put a, I put a chain link leash on my pit bull and I walk around my neighborhood in a wife beater in Timberlands. And when somebody brings another dog up to my dog, he's a very reactive dog. He was abused. He's a rescue. Somebody brings a dog up to my dog. I go, get back, get back. He doesn't know you like that. Get back, get back. He don't know you like that. And then, you know, they usually respect that. And then my little special boy makes his poo-poos. And um, I pick them up with my lips. I get down. I peck at them like a bird. I peck his turds like a bird. Then they, uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's a crazy visual. Just me just pecking at turds. But, yeah, no, everything's good, man. We're just, um, 
yeah, we're back in the gym. We're working on ourselves. We're realizing that, uh, you know, uh, maybe Skankfest was a bad idea. <laughs> kind of learning that, the, the serotonin dump from that. I talked to a lot of other people who went, and they were like, geez, yeah, I'm just kind of glad to be back. I just kind of felt like my endorphins got wrung out of my head, and I was in, like, a funk for a week. So it's like Skankfest, uh, Skank's disease. It's the week after Skankfest where you're just, like, all worn out from all the happiness and laughter you had over the weekend, and now your fucking, your brain is all dried up and filled with evil gay thoughts, you know? <laughs> Sometimes I just sit in my room, like, late at night, like, four in the morning in pitch black, and I just think of, like, gay stuff all the time. Like, I have, like, these really gay thoughts where I think that, like, I'm not funny and people don't like me and stuff. I'm a lot of gay self-talk. I talk to myself gay. I'm, like, very gay to myself. I'm, like... <laughs> Dude, I'm so gay when it comes to my my mind. You know, my mind is so gay sometimes. I have, like, gay mind. It's like I have homo brain. My brain is just gay, you know? And you just have those gay thoughts where you're like, oh, you're not doing good enough or, you know, you're not funny or you're not working hard enough. It's crazy. <clears throat> it's crazy because when I come back, there was, like, this void. You know, I, don't, I didn't have any work. I didn't have any shows to do, and... I'm the kind of person where I need to be doing something where I feel valueless. And it's like that kind of came from like being a little kid and then having an older sister. And my older sister would always tell me like, you guys need to learn how to do something or nobody will love you. <laughs> I'm like five years old and she's like, you got to be useful or nobody's going to marry you. So I just kind of like avoided becoming useful and then, you know. You go to jail, you go home, you go to jail, and then you end up homeless. You figure out how to be useful, dude. That shit is that was a godsend. I am so grateful for my life experiences because it really, you know, your boy's a worker. I like to work. I like to put in energy and create something. I, I'm glad that you know. Right now, if I'm not if I'm not doing comedy or doing this podcast right now, I'm like uh, just husband maxing and uh carboy maxing and now i'm back to uh i'm back in my gym cell era i think i'm gonna go into hibernation this winter and come out a full-blown uh filipino golem i just want to come out like i said again fucking ludicrous arms they're gonna be like yo ridley have you been working out and i'm just gonna have two orange traffic cones for arms <laughs> nothing else has been worked on my chest nothing i can barely my shoulder and chest muscles can barely support the weight of my giant, ludicrous Popeye forearms, dude. I want, like, two big old propane tanks. I just want to get these nice and big, man. My my chest, I'm very, like, a uh, fat. I'm, uh, what is the word? Uh, fat piece of shit. Uh, I can't. It's, like, on the tip of my tongue. Obese retard. I can't fucking think of... I'm shaped like a torta i'm fucking uh all all chest all back no ass i am fucking my body shape is crazy i'm barrel i'm, I'm barrel torsoed and i have these little t-rex arms and i have this giant cock and none of it makes sense like my body profile none of my like my body doesn't make sense it's almost like you know being asian and white you know genetically i'm all fucked up it's almost it's almost like races shouldn't intermix i um you know, just, I love that you guys are here. It's such a chill, wholesome, you know, this is a family show. You, know, this, you can play this for your kids. Uh, Taylor updated me recently. Uh, Radio Ridley Radio is popping up on YouTube, kids. So that is great news. Those SEO, those SEO optics, you know, to have the foresight. Taylor is such a good producer. He has the foresight to be like, this needs to be on YouTube, kids. And... I'm I'm just so grateful that I have somebody like Taylor in my in my Rolodex of, you know, techniques and 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 plans and just somebody like Taylor who can make sure this podcast is exposed to people under the age of 18. And that is exactly like one of our mission statements is, you know, to inspire young people and, you know, yeah, don't be fat and gay and retarded. It's just kind of like a little thing from me to you, the future of America. So, yeah, my body is just fucked. <clears throat> we're kind of, um, we're kind of, we're kind of learning that we've been learning um, in recent, you know, in recent tests and, you know, trials that we've been running at the lab that, you know, my body is not good. It's, you know, we, 
we uh, looked under a microscope, and under that microscope, we saw a little sign. Um, it was a, it, it was no bigger than the tip of a ballpoint pen. And we zoomed in with the microscope, and it said, Michael Ridley, you're a fat piece of shit, and you need to fix your body. And we looked up at each other in the laboratory, me and Taylor. We were both, we were just both in the laboratory, like, good God. Do you understand the weight of this scientific discovery? And, and Taylor was wearing, uh, he had bifocals on for some reason, and he took them off real slow, and he goes, no, I don't. And I went, you fool. It's so obvious. This, this, this is, if we were looking for a sign, this is it. A tiny microscopic sign, no bigger than a ballpoint pen tip. We saw it, on, <laughs> we saw it under the microscope and we were like, we need to get you into medical ASAP. So Taylor, you know, he puts me on a stretcher. We roll into medical, you know, he, he takes my shirt off for me and uh, <laughs> he starts putting these little, he starts putting these little tape circles all over my chest and he's hooking them up to a machine, and Taylor's not wearing bifocals anymore. He now has like scientist, like chemist goggles for some reason. We're like in a, we're in like a training science science gym thing, and and I'm running, you know, I'm running, I'm running on this treadmill, and he's looking at my BPMs, and I'm running a full sprint, but I'm only I'm at 49 BPM. And and Taylor's like mind is blown. He's like, how is his He's sweating profusely. He's like breathing for, he's gasping for air. <laughs> yet, yet his heart rate is only at 49 BPM. And, and you know, the, 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 it was walking and then walking turned into jogging and then jogging tor- turned into a sprint. And then from a sprint, I, I, I decided halfway through the sprint that I should get down on all fours. And now there is a, he cranks up the speed he cranks up the speed on the treadmill to 27 miles per hour. I'm on all fours, leaping at 27 miles per hour. Crazy. It, it was crazy. I, I I couldn't believe I couldn't believe the record that I was setting for myself physically. And we were just kind of like, you know, once once all the tests were done, and he took all those sticky like heart rate monitor things off me. We we kind of like sat down and we figured out a plan, and that plan is to. You know, just regularly exercise and probably watch what you eat. It's the R3 Podcast. Guys, this podcast was brought to you by DickLasers.com. You ever think to yourself, dude, I want to be funny as hell, but I don't want to actually, you know, put any energy towards it. I just want to pay money, and now all of a sudden, boom, I'm the funniest guy in the room. Well, you can at DickLasers.com. Go get you one of those funny little, it's a it's a cute little, uh, it's a funny little laser pointer that shines the shapes of several types of wieners. You got, you know, Skinny Boy Jones. You got the uh, Chungus. You got the Chode Meister. You got uh, 65 degrees, little to the left. You got POV, you're facing front of me. It's so hilarious. It's so easy to use, and it's so fun. I keep one with me all the time. If you ever want to shine a wiener on a fucking stranger while they're walking with their back turned, <laughs> perfect opportunity to bring back that fifth-grade schoolyard mischief. Head over to DickLasers.com and get 10% off at checkout when you use promo code SWEATY. They also have the boob laser, so now you can shine jugs on people's chests at the bar. Head over to DickLaser.com and use promo code SWEATY for 10% off on either the Dick Laser or the boob laser. It's $19.99, but you can get 10% off at checkout when you use promo code SWEATY. That's promo code SWEATY at checkout. Get you, get you that little 10% discount and uh, support the podcast. Head over to DickLasers.com and get one today. Back to the show, boys. You're listening to the R3 Podcast. To this day, I have no idea how Taylor could afford that whole, te- like, physical testing lab. Like, that. this is, like, medical-grade stuff. I don't even understand how he had that. <sighs> you know. But that's what friends are for, you know? And I just try to, like, be grateful for that, you know? Especially, like, he's such a good guy. He's a good dude. It's the Patreon money. That's how I feel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Please sign up. Four point two million on Patreon. Uh, four point two million dollars a month on Patreon. I really appreciate you guys. We're like literally swimming in it, and I, I try to be humble. I try to be, you know. <laughs> I try to be, you know. I'm not a flashy guy. You know, I'm not a materialistic guy. I'm not a. I don't 
I don't really concern myself with what other people think of me. You know, I can just leave the house in a, in a scuffed up pair of shoes. Uh, I could leave the house with stains on my shirt. Maybe, you know, I have a little bit of hair on my neck. I didn't edge up my, I didn't shave my facial hair properly. I can just leave the house like that, you know. I don't care what kind of car I drive. <laughs> you know. To me, like, when it comes to romantic relationships with my wife, I don't care what she looks like. You know, her looks mean nothing to me. It's all, you know, I'm all very, you know, I'm not a surface level person is what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm you know, I'm deeper than that. You know, I don't think outward appearances are a direct correlation of what kind of person you're dealing with. You know, I like to peel back and learn. And I've learned this uh, over the past month because I've been, um, There's, near my neighborhood, there was a forest, and they took all the trees down. They took all the trees down in this forest near my apartment, and it has displaced a lot of homeless people. And I've been out there for the last two weeks feeding, watering, dressing wounds, you know, helping, um, creating five-year plans for these people, and this is not through any organization. This has just been, I'm not taking donations. This is all my own money. I'm just, I've been pouring money into helping these homeless people by my neighborhood. And, um, you know, and, and it, I just feel like that's what I should be doing, you know, with my time. You know, I'm helping these homeless people. You know, it's not my fault that, you know, it's not my fault that they're where they are. You know. But I can do something. So... I went down there with a bunch of Slim Jims. I had like <laughs> at least like 40 or 50 Slim Jims. And not those little puny like 89 cent ones. I'm talking like the $2.89. I had about 40, 40 to 60 of them. And I got a, I got a bow and arrow. And I just kind of stood at the curb. Uh, the forest goes down a hill, you know, and they're all there, you know, picking up the pieces, you know. And that's what I hate about deforestation is that like you cut down all these trees and then all the wildlife that lives there they have nowhere to go. You know, these homeless people, they have nowhere to go. You cut their tree, you, you took out their natural habitat, and now they have nowhere to go. You know, before they were hidden, you know, and now they're amongst us. And personally, I don't think that's right. You know, I don't appreciate the city of Austin cutting those trees down, displacing all that wildlife, displacing all those homeless people, and now I have to use my money to help them if this if the city of austin has money to remove the trees and thus displacing the homeless people then the city of austin can do something about all this displaced wildlife there has to be some kind of homeless reserve somewhere where we can take these homeless people where they can be amongst other homeless people somewhere with clean water and sunlight maybe like a big in maybe like a large like a large farm with tall fences and they all have like a tracker on their neck and they can't go too far. Like if they, like if they try to leave, they'll get zapped and then they turn back around and go back to the farm and you, you know, something nice like that. <laughs> I just don't understand why, like, you know, I just don't understand it. Like why would the city do that? Displace all that precious wildlife. You know, I am, I'm a wildlife activist, and I don't appreciate what they did to the homeless in Austin near my house. Mm. I'm parched. I got a character. Mm. I was thinking about this the other day, like um, I was driving through Austin on East Six, and <clears throat> we had lunch at Sour Duck. And I loved it, and it was so beautiful. But I was thinking about all the people that were displaced by gentrification. You know, <laughs> it was just all these people got displaced by by gentrification. And I was thinking of a character. It was like there's like there used to be black people in Austin, but we made everything so expensive that they can't exist, and uh, they can't afford to live there anymore. Or you know, just people who lived there before can't afford to live there anymore. But it's mostly black people. Uh, let's be honest, gentrification is. It's a tool of liberal whites to politely kick out all the riffraff while still maintaining a Black Lives Matter political ideology and stance. 
it's very convenient for the liberal white. They, you know, they improve the neighborhood, they improve property values, while simultaneously removing all of the POCs, while simultaneously supporting said POCs in their socioeconomic differences. It's it's very self righteous. It's so fucking shitty. And I, I genuinely love the irony of white people moving in, liberal whites with their best intentions moving in, but also inadvertently driving out all the blacks, Mexicans, and the Afro-Latinos, and <laughs> lower-tiered jungle Asians such as myself. So I was thinking of a character, it's like a um, black guy that loves gentrification. <laughs> Like the one black guy who can afford to still live there after all the whites have driven everyone out. And now everyone who used to live in the neighborhood is back and they're protesting. And meanwhile, that one black guy who loves gentrification still has his house, still has everything. And he's telling them he steps out, he leaves, he steps out of his house and he sees them outside and they're all protesting, right? They're all like, man. I want my neighborhood back. This is fucked up, right? And then he comes out and he goes, um, he goes, <laughs> don't be mad because y'all broke as hell, boy. <laughs> Man, I love gentrification. All these white folk came in, boy. All these white boy, all these white boys and white girls with the cyber trucks and the Teslas moved in, boy. Don't be mad because you broke, baby. <laughs> Don't hate the player, hate the game now. Just Bernie Mac. <laughs> Bernie Mac still <laughs> Bernie Mac can afford to live in the gentrified neighborhood. He's just roasting all the poor black people. <laughs> <laughs> boy, don't be mad. Don't be mad because you don't be mad because you pocket watching, boy. You need to go get your money up, not your funny up, boy. Y'all motherfuckers talking about, oh, we can't afford to rent no more. Motherfucker, y'all could barely afford to rent before they got here, boy. Don't act like y'all was doing good before they moved here. Y'all motherfuckers on WIC, EBT, and all that. Don't act like, don't act like you won't waiting for tax time. Shit, every month tax time for me, motherfucker. I stay getting that money. That's why they call me Bank Roller. I'm the young Bank Roller. He's 47 years old. He's wearing a, <laughs> he has like a Jaguar XJ, like a 1992 Jaguar XJ in his front yard. <laughs> he's got like uh, Versace loafers and like a black, uh, he's got Versace loafers, a black Kangol hat, uh, a Cuban link chain, uh, black wife beater tucked into gray slacks and his ankles are showing and he's smoking uh he's smoking a black and mild and he's making fun of them he's like spitting on them and shit <laughs> <laughs> spitting on them mm -mm, sounds like po people problems to me boy <laughs> sounds like po people problems to me <laughs> hello white people welcome We've been waiting for your arrival, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood, y'all. Oh, don't mind them. They just broke as hell. <laughs> He's the villain. <laughs> He's just a villain of the hood. Every, everybody, everyone who grows up in the hood has like that quintessential old black guy who's just been doing well for so long and been fucking everybody's wives and hasn't gotten killed by anyone yet. He's been the sneaky link for 40 years. A lot of the kids that live in the neighborhood are his, but they're being raised by the husbands of those said marriages that he's interrupted. <laughs> so, he's, so anytime he sees the neighborhood kids, he has like this. He doesn't know if they're his children or not. They don't. He doesn't know, but he has like an odd feeling to say something. Like he feels guilty for getting all the moms in the neighborhood pregnant and making the father, like making the husbands raise them as their father. So he always kind of gives unsolicited advice to the younger generation, and it's like. I'm going to tell you one thing. Listen well, listen good. <laughs> listen well and listen good. If you get her laughing, guaranteed her pussy laughing. <laughs> you might not have the money right now, but you might have the funny. If you get her giggling, <laughs> boy, she might, she might break you off a piece of that pussy. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. Life wasn't always this nice. You see that car? Do you think that shit was given to me, motherfucker? 
No, 40 years. 40 years. I retired last year. I own this house. Three syllables, motherfucker. Listen, listen, listen well. Listen good, listen well. Three syllables. Equity. Equity. <laughs> Equity. Do you know what that means? No. It's a tool of the white devil. <laughs> but in the hands of a capable black man can mean the world of a difference. Is this fucking Lawrence Fishburne? <laughs> it feels like Lawrence Fishburne or like, uh, yeah. It's like giving the kids financial advice and shit. Trying to financial advice, but also how to get pussy. <laughs> like 13, 12 Ball years old. just goes in his yard and they Ball end goes up talking to him for too long. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we're sorry, Mr. Green. Can we have our ball back? <laughs> Of course, of course, young blood, of course. You're gonna have to take it from me. <laughs> you can have your ball back, but you're gonna have to take it from me, young blood. Just like I took your mama's pussy. <laughs> What'd you say? Nothing, nothing. It's <laughs> fucking doing globe trotter tricks. <laughs> this is terrifying. I'm scared just talking, I'm scared making this guy. But yeah. Like, there's always somebody in the hood just like that. Like, I've always noticed. And it's not a Jaguar XG anymore. It's a fucking Polaris slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> they don't rock with the They don't rock with the Jaguar XG anymore. It's a fucking... smoking a <laughs> he's smoking a black and mild ball pumping gas <laughs> Mary Jane no 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 do you 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 not do you do you do you do Mary Jane girl don't play no games yeah 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 do you 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 what's that Nah, I ain't gonna turn the music down, motherfucker. I'm 75 years old, and I don't have to take shit from anybody. Not do you did it, did it, Mary Jane. Girl, don't play no games. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ha, ha, ha. It's like 200, 200 fucking decibels blaring out of this Polaris slingshot. RGB light. RGB fucking, yeah, like he got a star in Mario Kart. Yeah, baby. That's 40 years in a warehouse right there. I just got my pension. Yeah, yeah, you do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Like, dude, turn it off, brother. Turn it off, bro. My wife's here, dude. Turn it off. God, I'm with my wife, dude. Take it, turn it down a notch, brother. Good God. It's so funny, because that is a real person. That, that guy exists all over the country. All over this neighborhood. All over this neighborhood, for sure. He's off. He don't give a fuck. He don't give a fuck. He's out there fucking... He just washed the jag. He's out there wiping it down. He's out there wiping it down. Miss Williams, it's always a pleasure. Hello, Mr. Green. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you, do you, do you, do you? God, I would pay so much money to swap bodies with that. I would do get out with that guy. God, I would love to be Mr. Green, dude. Mr. Green rules. Mr. Green. <laughs> He's got one of those old hi-fi systems. It's all stainless steel and black. The big-ass knob on it. Incredible. Wicker chairs on the porch. Bars on the windows. Been here, my family been here for 60 years. I'm not selling my house. All my neighbors sold. Good. <laughs> now there's white women in the hood. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Just a flat ass white woman. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. The terrible Mr. Green. 
the irrefutable Mr. Green. So funny, dude. Oh, my God. I want to show you a video that I don't know why it exists. It's so... Um, I want you to open up YouTube. Type in Petey Green. Petey Green, how to eat a watermelon. This is probably... This is something I grew up watching. And not a lot of people know this video. This video is fucking crazy. And when I think of Mr. Green, I think of, like, Petey Green. It's, like, an exaggerated, like, not what Petey Green is about to do. So Petey Green had a, a public access television show during the 70s. And um, he was, it was like a slice of life. A lot like my podcast. Watching this video feels a lot like my podcast. It's just him in a chair talking directly into the camera. And uh, Taylor's going to show you that in just a second. I think, yeah, that's it right there. We'll wait for the ad. Boom. All right. How to eat a watermelon Best of it with, with Petey Green. Channel 20 in Washington, D.C. Think twice. Think twice. Before you answer. Think, think twice. twice. Think twice. Think twice before you answer. Think twice before you say yes. You know, I know y'all saying yes and that. Look at this fool. Got this watermelon here. The reason why I said think twice is because... That's, give me a little air. That'll give me a little air, y'all. The reason why I say think twice is because I just can't understand how we as black people Start eating watermelon in the cloud. Lord have me. <laughs> this is called a heart. You know, you know, it makes me feel so bad sometimes when I'm, I see black, my black brothers and sisters, and they'll see me eating a piece of watermelon like this, yeah. And they'll go. When you're going to frown their faces, I mean, that's despicable. But it's good. And you know the thing that makes me mad? When I go to their parties, they will take a big, pretty watermelon like this and cut all kinds of gadgets. And, and then cut the inside. You see this good piece of watermelon here? Cut all the guts out that good watermelon and mix it up and mess it up with something else, man. And sometimes they got a notion to put liquor in it. And then after they cut them little crevices in it, then put it back inside of that hood. Man, that's a waste of watermelon when all you got to do with it is pick it up like this here. Look here, let's pick it up like this here. I don't mess it up. I whack both my eyes up. Well, lay back. That's the way you eat a watermelon. And I don't care if you're a PhD, if you're a whatever. You can't tell me cutting all that out, putting it back in there. Hello. It's better than here. Now, I know you're sitting home. That's an ignorant nigga. But this is a sweet watermelon. I ain't gonna waste no time cutting no watermelon up and mix it up with no food cocktail. All I'm saying to you, be yourself, because I went to a party overnight with some white folks. They didn't have it in that thing there. They had slices. Walk around, Peter Green, you want a slice? I said, yeah, give me a slice. And one lady said, I don't think, I didn't think you blacks eat watermelon like that no more. I said, look, lady, don't try to get out on me, you understand? You just want to eat the good part and want me to cut it all up and do it. And then, you know, I was mad with niggas for putting salt on the watermelon to two old Bamas. I was talking to two cold-blooded country Bamas, and uh, I said, why y'all put salt on the watermelon? Niggas were a man in my home said, you know, I'm down there at the bottom in Virginia. So let me tell you about salt, P. You say, you Washington niggas put too much salt on. Say, you just, I watch you, you y'all, them niggas dump salt on. Say, you put a twang of salt on a sweet melon, and it... It, it, and it brings out, like, acid. <laughs> I said, what you say? He said, man, I love watching you watching people. Y'all dump salt on it like you got chicken. He said, but you twang it. I never knew that. But I'm just wanting to sit here this evening and let you all know there's two things you don't do. Don't cut the insides out of no watermelon and mm -hmm. mix it with nothing else. Mm -hmm. And don't put no two sticks around a cone of lotion here. 
You know, mm -hmm. y'all niggas put two sticks. Don't do that. You get one of them big roast nears, saturated with some butter, and hit that. Be yourself. Mm -hmm. And always remember that I got it off the vine. It's sweet like honey, and I'll plug it all, all the time. time. Sit back, y'all. <laughs> I know you see this nigga's good and crazy. <laughs> Boy, I, tell y just, I love you, uh, Peter Green. Rest in peace. A legend. A Virginia DMV legend, Petey Green himself. Nobody knows about that. <laughs> Nobody knows about that video, bro. We grew up watching Petey Green, man. We grew up watching that video specifically in the sixth grade. Now, y'all might be, like, thinking to yourself watching this. Michael, that was incredibly racist to put Petey Green on your podcast. You know damn well what you're doing. What? What am I doing? Platforming a forgotten cultural icon from where I'm from? He's not wrong. We put salt on watermelon in Virginia because it do be having that twang on it. And ironically enough, I went to HEB yesterday and I bought an $8 tub of sliced watermelon. And I'm going to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, I destroyed that shit. I feel so good. I went to the gym and I ate this much watermelon. I ate a whole tub's worth, a big tub. My mouth is watering for some water. Damn, God. Watering for some water. But yeah, think twice before you answer. Think twice before you say yes. There's messages in there. It's funny as fuck. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy su it was video. such a good video. But but deep down, isn't that a good video? Didn't that video make you feel good? Like, yeah. that was like your uncle or something, and he was just... Also, it is fucking crazy to scoop out an entire watermelon and blend it and then put it back in the husk. Yeah. And then put liquor in that? Yeah, what the hell? I would be so pissed if I saw, a, like, the husk of a watermelon on the table, and I'm yeah. like, oh, nice. And then it's just slushy juice. That somebody made for a party or something? Yeah, that would piss me off. He's not wrong. He's not. I think watermelon is, it gets such a bad rap. It gets, it's like, it, it gets this bad rap. Like he was saying, he was like, black people are, like, hiding the fact that they like watermelon. And it's crazy because I feel like that's still like a that's still apparent. It's like eating a hot dog in in, eight, in the eighth grade, and you're around all your friends, and they start making fun of you for eating the hot dog, and they start calling you gay. It's crazy that like you can't even see. I had two hot dogs today. Mm -mm. I'm lying. I had four hot dogs. I had four hot dogs before I got here. Incredible hot dogs and watermelon. That's what I was eating. I'm eating a strict diet of hot dogs and watermelon. Like I'm telling you folks, we're uh, we're building our bodies. We're building a better tomorrow. Hot dogs and watermelon. Only here at R3. Rest in peace, Peter Green. Miss you, Mr. Green. But yeah, comment down below if you had somebody like that growing up in your life, man. That was funny as hell. God, man, I miss that. I miss I miss the culture of being around. I miss the culture of being around black people. I miss it a lot. What was Austin he? is very gentrified. There's no like where I'm from. There's like soul. You know, Newport News. There's like there's fucking soul food restaurants all over Hampton Roads. I don't want to see what a soul food restaurant in Austin looks like, dude. I don't want to. I don't even want to. You go in there. Rachel Dolezal's there. I feel like if there was a soul food restaurant in Austin, it would be owned by a Rachel Dolezal ass like lady. She's like white, but she's like tan. She's got cornrows and shit. She's got a black husband. Obviously, that's why she thinks she's black. She talks like the the Popeyes lady. Mm -hmm. Come on down, y'all. <laughs> hey, lady, that's that's not how I eat. Please stop. Please stop it. <laughs> Please stop. Please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wait till you try my collard greens, baby. It's like you're a white lady. Please stop. You're making me uncomfortable. Please stop it. <laughs> Black lives matter, y'all. <laughs> Just a white woman. Just a fucking white lady, dude. <laughs> Kamala. Just a fucking Kamala ass lady. The greens. I used to mix the greens in the tub. It's like, no, you fucking did not. Shut up. Shut up. Do not let that woman become president, dude. That woman specifically. I feel like if there's gonna be a president, a uh, female president, it's gotta be like a, it's gotta be a fucking evil Chinese lady or something. Oh, 
Can you open the R3 email? Somebody sent us a... Somebody sent us a fan mail. Somebody's got a question for me. Question for me down in R3. It's mail time. Taylor's gonna open up the fucking Gmail. And I'm gonna answer your email with detail. <laughs> gonna try and stay on track and do not derail. Do not elect a black and Jamaican Indian female. <laughs> All right. Let's read the email. Chris Weech. Hey, Chris. Chris says, hey, Michael. Congratulations. I don't know. I, hold on. Hold on. I guess I'm going to do this voice. Hey, Michael. Congratulations on the continued rise. I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just curious how you manage the hyperhidrosis or whatever they're calling it these days with so many handshakes in your midst. <laughs> Have a great night, Chris. Chris. Well, Chris, I'll tell you right now. Uh, palms, chinky, sweaty, palms. Never hold on. I'm hot, I'm ready, chinky, palms, never sweaty. They're not. My hands are dirty from working on the car. But I don't get sweaty palms. My hyperhidrosis, <clears throat> it really centers on my temples, my forehead, my neck, and my, and my brow. My forehead, it starts at the top of my hairline and drips down. It collects on my caveman-esque brow. And then once it pools up enough, it rides down these wrinkles right into my slits. And it burns. It burns so bad. So how I manage it is really just keeping my head temperature low. Like if I wear a beanie and it's 78 degrees, some people can wear a beanie in 78 degrees. And they're like, fine. If I wear a beanie in 78 degrees, we went to the pumpkin patch last weekend and it was like 78, 82 direct sunlight and I had the beanie on for five minutes outside of the car I'm like dude I had to give it to my wife I was like put this thing away I cannot wear this but I shaved the back of my head uh, I got a haircut and I got like the back of my neck tapered up and lined up and there's so much breeze back there so breezy back there so as long as I manage you know my heart rate and manage my uh my head temperature like the exterior temperature of my head because it does get it gets like let's say let's say i go somewhere it's it's 68 degrees outside no no 68 degrees inside and then i go somewhere where it's 72 or 75 i will just start sweating uncontrollably too much inc incredibly too much sweat like it it almost looks like i'm fighting off a fever how much sweat and i'm not hot it's just my body gets confused and it thinks it needs that much sweat to cool down. And then I'm sweating so much that it's making me anxious that I'm sweating. And then that just starts a combo multiplier of sweat. So I can't fix it unless I go sit. I used to go in the, the Vulcan gas company had a deep freezer for all the alcohol. I would just go in there and just... <laughs> just see all the steam coming off my body just get frozen and then I'd walk out and be like all right cool i have to go in like 20 degrees for five minutes and then it's like oh now i'm back everything's fine i think i'm supposed to my like genetically you know the philippines arid no humid tropical climate uh arkansas the south very Humid, not tropical, but just humid, you know, hot and humid, genetically. Genetically, I come from hot and humid location. I should be fine with dealing with the heat, right? Like, it would make sense somebody like me who's lived in hot areas my whole life can deal with it, but I cannot. So we found a little bit of a life hack. I wash my face, right, like you should after a shower, or during your shower when you wash your face or whatever. So I wash my face. No facial 
stuff that you can buy in the store works for me. I've been using Head and Shoulders because it has a type of acid in it. The same acid that stops dandruff cleans the acne off my face. So I take Head and Shoulders and I just scrub it on my face and my mustache and my, and then that dries all the oils out of my skin. <laughs> it's crazy. My wife suggested it, and I was like, whoa, I'll try. And then I started using it, and I was like, holy shit, my face is like clearing up. And then I use this lotion. I have a carp. It's called Carpe. It comes in an orange bottle. And you just use that as the after lotion for your face wash. And it has, like, some kind of powder in it that, like, bro, when I put this stuff on, it moisturizes my face, right? But then with the, the spots where I don't moisturize, you can feel the sweat. There's, like, a layer it's almost like oil and water, how they separate in the, in the in a glass. Like there's like a dry, it's all dry, but then there's like the fucking equator of sweat. It's like Rainex. Yeah, it's like Rainex <laughs> for my face. <laughs> it's exactly. It's like hydrophobic, hydrophobic technology applied to the Asian sweaty man's face gave him the ability to have a social life, as well as increase his abilities as a live performer. Carpe, check him out. They got ball powder and all that shit. They got deodorant too. But yeah, I use the facial lotion. This shit rules. Hi hyperhidrosis is a nightmare. Hence my name is Jinky Sweat. Because if you're going to remember anything about me, you're going to be like, well, he was Asian and he was sweating his ass off. You know? And it kind of sounds like Keith Sweat. Chinky Sweat. And I like the Keith Sweat. Mm -mm -mm. I just want to... Isn't that crazy? Uh, I was thinking about how talented Eddie Murphy is. You ever think about that? Mm -hmm. You ever, like, kind of stop and think, like, who else was like that? Donald Glover. Jamie Foxx. There are these, like, powerful, like, super talents. Jamie Foxx is one stand-up actor, singer, dancer, comedian. Like, any, and he can do anything. Jamie Foxx can do anything. Eddie Murphy, selling out arenas, 19, 20 years old, Beverly Hills Cop, Dr. Doolittle, all that, the donkey from Shrek. But if we go before all that shit, my girl likes to party all the time, party all the time. One of my favorite songs, I didn't know who it was by, then I, I typed it in, party all the time. Fucking Eddie Murphy, dude. Yeah, that song is Rick James and Eddie Murphy made that song together. Which makes Charlie Murphy's Hollywood, true Hollywood stories are set in the same time period as that. Yeah. Wow. So blown. Rick James coming over, it's it's funny how, you know, those true Hollywood stories. <laughs> Rest in peace, Charlie Murphy. We miss you. I miss Charlie Murphy, man. But yeah, it's crazy that <laughs> it's crazy that 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 like your brother's Eddie Murphy, and then you're just like telling those stories. And then there's parts of history where you can be like it probably happened around party all the time like when they were in the stew making party all the time <laughs> rick james ruins his couch and then charlie murphy's there and he's like yo this is fucking rude <laughs> it's funny as hell to me yeah. also if you notice all everyone involved with the uh true hollywood stories is dead except for dave chappelle Prince, Charlie Murphy, Rick James. They're all dead. Jesus Christ, man. Dave. Dave lives. Hmm. Do you guys know that Dave has a Filipino wife? Dave Chappelle has a Filipino wife. And if all Filipinos are related, Dave Chappelle's my uncle. It's just the protocol. I love that about Filipino people and black people. It's like, yo, you know what I mean? There's just like that, yeah, this is my cousin. No, it's not. That's one of your mom's friend's kids. Yeah, it's my cousin. <laughs> yeah, we grew up together. What? Yeah. That's just how, that's how it is. It's like a village, the village uh, of children, the village, village kids. Community, when you grow up in a community like that, it's beautiful. My mom had a black best friend. Well, had. He's still alive. My mom's not here anymore. 
he had a best uh, she had a best friend named um, Quasar Jr. Quasar was the uh, he was the DJ at the nightclub that my mom was a dancer at. You know, it's Virginia, man. They were all in bikinis. There's no you can't be there's no full nude bars in Virginia. Well, my mom was a dancer in the mid two thousands, early two thousands, and um, they would have. I've always been up late. You know, I was always around like those, you know, my mom and her friends. And there's like, my mom was like f- freshly separated from my dad. And she was tired of being broke. And she just started dancing. And she was making money, dude. She was making money. And she was raising us at the same time. She'd be out all night dancing, making money, partying, you know, being like a fun party Asian lady with her tits out, doing that all night long. People please her, making everyone happy, making everyone laugh, doing all that shit, being funny, you know, killing it on the killing it on the stage. And then um, she'd leave us, uh, she'd leave us in the car in a parking lot, and we just wait until she get off. Then we'd all go to Waffle House, and this was back in like 2002. You still smoke cigarettes in a Waffle House, and I'd be out with them until like four in the morning, and then they would drop me off at school at like seven, eight. <laughs> and it, yeah, so I've always been around, you know. And then they'd come home, and then they'd, the party would still go on. And Quasar, he'd put the music on. They'd put a, my mom had a giant karaoke laser disc machine, and they'd put the giant laser disc in, and they would sing karaoke all night long. There'd be people in the living room doing blow, people smoking weed incredible it was an incredible time and those people like uh met people like quasar jones and he was this black guy who was the dj at the strip club that my mom used to dance at and he would uh he's a he's a country singer and he posts on facebook he, he has like a full studio and he just he just holds a mic and he like dude he's old as fuck now but he's still out there <laughs> I just want you to know He sings like that <laughs> That I missed you <laughs> Be a fucking guitar Like MIDI files playing in the background <laughs> He like sings with MIDI files in the background. It rules And then he has like a light thing And, he, and he's in there he's, <laughs> He'll be on the He'll be on the mic stand Singing And then you see him reach over And he presses like And changes the lights in the background It just starts going in <laughs> And he has a whole Facebook page that. That's awesome yeah, It rules Yeah He's an album too. I think he has a YouTube. Check him out. You guys, check him out. Quasar Jones. Yeah, dude. What about Quasar Jones? Hmm? Why'd you bring up Quasar? You brought up Quasar Jones for, for a reason, I feel like. I'm trying to remember. I was just thinking about him. Uh-oh. He's getting old. Uh, he had a little bit of health problems, but he's, oh, like a year or two ago, he had health problems, but he's doing better. Quasar, man. He ruled. It was just one of those. He's like one of the only male figures in my life that wasn't like associated with abuse or anything. He was good. He was a good friend of my mom. And he always had like hot girlfriends too. God, he great dude. He had the bitches, dude. I remember the first time I saw big ass fake tits. It was Quasar brought his girlfriend over and she had the Zungas boy. I was like eight years old, like bricked up. <laughs> Shannon. Shannon with the big white fake titties, boy. Good God. Good God, Unc. Bringing them things around me, boy. Quasar. Quasar, Unc. Why are you bringing them things around here, bro? <laughs> he is in the room. It's fucking... Yeah, I just always remember, like, I walk out with my blankie. Sleepy's in my eyes. I wake up, and there's just, like, eight strippers in my house getting fucked up. And everyone's laughing. And my mom's drunk, and she picks me up, and she's like, Oh, I'm sorry we woke you up, honey. And she puts me back... And she gives me a kiss on the cheek, and she smells like cigarettes. And there's just fucking <laughs> eight bitches with giant tits in my living room. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude. Nick V always tells me, he's like, yo, your lore is crazy. I'm like, yeah, I should probably tell the show more about my lore. You know, it's my a little blip in my childhood from like two thousand and one to about oh four, like that. Three or four years. 
Frogman lore goes hard. It does. It is a Frogman lore. So many layers to it, dude. Yeah. Good God. I hope you guys liked the. Uh, I hope you guys liked Mr. Green. That's a good character. I thought that was a great act out. I loved it. I love playing Mr. Green. That was funny as hell. Is this your ball? <laughs> yeah, you can have your ball back. But you have to take it from me. <laughs> you don't have to take it from me, son. <laughs> like I said, you can take it back whenever you want. <laughs> you just have to get it from my hands. All while wearing the loafers. Yeah. Just crossing up kids in loafers and fucking slacks. Incredible. Ah, the show must go on, and it only continues on Patreon. So if you guys want to take a second to go over to patreon.com, check out the R3 Radio Really Radio on Patreon. It's a fun time over there. We got one, five, ten, twenty dollar tiers. Suggest you get the twenty dollar tier, because after two months I send you a shirt. <laughs> Makes sense, right? If you say stuff if you sub to the twenty dollar tier, DM me on IG and I will send you that shirt. I've done it in the past. The boys are happy. It's the same amount of content, but double. We do an hour here, we do an hour there. And I'm going to tell you right now, Playboy, we do an hours everywhere. <laughs> Portland, whatever city we're in, pull the camera out and crank something out for you. I had a good time on this one. I'm going to take a little fiver, and we're going to record the Patreon episode. Guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and tell your friends about the show. If you want to send some mail like Chris did, check us out over at RadioRidleyRadio at gmail.com. Send me or Taylor or send us both a question. We'll take time to answer it. You guys can directly contribute to the show. And if you guys want to see any, if you guys have any character ideas or character prompts that you want to see me act out on the show, you can do that at RadioRidleyRadio at gmail.com. That'd it's be fun. Another way to directly contribute to the show. Because we're doing our best over here. And, uh, you know, I'm cranking out two hours of riffs a week. And I'll tell you right now, my fucking balls are running dry. My riff balls. <laughs> my riff balls have wrung out dry. Sometimes I have to retain the riffs. I have to do riff retainment. <laughs> I don't riff for a month. And then I can just get back to it. I let my riff... <clears throat> let my riff tanks regenerate. Squeeze my riff balls dry. My, ba <laughs> my riff balls done wrung out. It's hard, man. It's hard. It's hard if you're not me. I'm Michael Ridley. I love you. Bye-bye.